Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to add placeable foliage in Unreal Engine 4. So I already did make the tutorial on how to destroy foliage and convert foliage into actors, um, as you can see, which is what this code is here. Um, but in this uh, video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to place foliage at runtime. So, uh, actually one thing I should point out is that if you did follow my other tutorial on how to um, remove foliage, where I pressed F and then it would uh, spawn an actor and remove the instance. It's actually one thing you need to change, which is you want to uh, come over here right after the line trace by channel. You want to add a branch, and the branch is going to the condition is going to be the blocking hit on the break hit result. And then if it's true, it's going to go straight to the cast, and that's really all you need to do. That'll basically prevent lag spikes because anytime you do the trace. It does all this, it pretty much has a lag, lag spike, and it does the cast. And so, now there will only be a slight lag spike when you actually trace something, rather than when the trace just hits the air. Alright, so, what we need to do first to um, get this set up is... Uh, of um, actually, what we're going to do is, first we're going to make an input. I'll have the input G key the uh, G keyboard event be my input to place the um, to place it but what you want to do is you want to if you follow my other tutorial then you just want to copy these you want to copy the line trace locations and the break kit result and you just want to paste them down below here we're going to do the same line trace for this if you didn't follow the other tutorial just pause the video right here and copy these. This just traces from where the player is to in front of the player. Alright, now that we've got that, um, all we need to do is, uh, we only have like three nodes that we need to add. So, um, before we do that, you want to add these two, um, these two variables here. The first variable is foliage actor. Um, which is of type actor, and that actually doesn't need to be editable. And you also want to add the component index variable, which is an int. And the default value you're probably going to want to set to zero. Um, I'll get it. I'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But um, also, I forgot to mention something you want to do is head into the construction script. Now that you've got those variables made, and inside the construction script, you need to add a uh, get actors get all actors of class all right and the class type is going to be an instanced foliage oh. so an instance foliage actor um, yep all right and let's see we've got that right off of the our actors output and to do a get and forget you are going to want to have that at zero. Now, I'm not completely sure, but I believe there can only be uh, one foliage uh, actor per level. If that's the case, then this zero should work fine. Uh, basically, what we're doing here is we are referencing our foliage actor so we can add more uh, pieces of foliage to it. So, you want to set the foliage actor to this get return node or return pin. Yeah, let's just clean this up a little bit. And once you've done that, that's all for the construction script. We're actually almost done here. And you want to go back in your event graph. Um, and what you're going to want to do is grab a... Uh, you're going to want to grab your foliage actor variable into the scene. And drag off of it and type get components by class. Alright. And the component class is going to be an instant static mesh component. Alright, and from the return value you want to do a get. And the uh, input integer is going to be the component index variable that we made. Alright, and right off of this uh, item from the get, you want to do add instance. All right, and then you want to hook up this add instance uh, after so that it fires off of 
the uh, line trace by channel. And for the instant transform, you want to go ahead and right click and split struck pin. And you want to hook up the location from the break kit result to the instant transform location. Now, as far as the transform goes, you know, you don't have to do this, but um, in our case, let me just show you here. Hopefully, maybe it works. Yep. So, in our case, uh, what we're doing is uh, we are essentially spawning where we trace to. Of course, you don't have to spawn where we trace to. You know, you can spawn it wherever you want, but this is just what I'll be doing in this tutorial. And you can see it did just spawn a tree. You may be surprised. You may be wondering why it spawned a tree, um, because we didn't specifically define a tree to spawn. But essentially what's happening is it is... Um, so it's grabbing our fully ejector, right? And then it's grabbing this component index. Um, so essentially what we have here is um, we have our foliage uh, tab here. This represents our foliage actor. And then these meshes here are our indexes, right? So this my tree is my component 1 or component 0. And this is component 1 from our component index variable. So, um, uh, so you know, if I change this default for the component index to 1, it's going to spawn the wheat because the wheat is the second component here and the first index, right? So now it's going to spawn some wheat. Drag this in here. Right, so you can see it does spawn the wheat and you may be thinking that you missed something just because it is that simple, but you probably didn't, assuming that it does spawn. Um, if you don't have these here, maybe you... well. Actually, no, I think that the order of these is always going to be the order of your indexes. So, you know, if this is your first item, it should always be index 0. Um, I'm not completely sure. One thing you can do to check for that, uh, you know, if you have a mesh, if you have one of your plants here and you want to know for sure which index it is, which index you need to use to spawn it, what you can do is you can actually go into the um, go into the code that we made in my first tutorial on how to cut down trees and stuff you know uh, convert uh, instances into actors and off of the uh, after the cast you have to do a print string and now what you're going to want to print is from this uh, um, from this let's see what is it I forgot. Um, I think it's from this hit actor. I have to do get components by class. And then the component class is going to be instant static mesh component. And from the return value, you ought to do a find item. And the item you ought to find is the output of the cast. And you ought to convert this int to a string by doing two string int. And then you can trace that. So we added these to our uh, first code that I made in my other tutorial where you press F. Alright, and that what this is going to do is it's going to trace our component index so we can know for sure. Um, so you can see the tree is index 0, so it is correct because it is our first item, which is index 0. And yeah, so tree is index 0, and a wheat should be index 1. We go ahead and check. So we in is index one. So that's just a quick way that you can um, check, you know, if you don't know which index you need to set in order to spawn a certain thing, you can just add those uh, four, these four nodes here. That'll help you out. And let's see here. Um, so if you're still confused, um, this component index, it's going to spawn. So if your component index is 0, it'll spawn your first item. If it's 1, it'll spawn your second item, and so on. Now, one thing we can do if we want to spawn both of them is I can go ahead and grab an input 1 from the keyboard, 
as well as an input too. And these are just going to switch between my uh, component indexes, right? So I'm just going to set that and set that again. And if we press 2, we want to switch our component index to 1 so we can spawn wheat. And if we press 1, we want to keep it at 0 so we can spawn our tree. Now you can see, right now it is at 0, so it'll spawn a tree. Oops. Uh, I guess not. Alright, so I pressed 1, it's going to spawn a tree. I can switch it to 2, it spawns wheat, right? And just keep switching back and forth, right? Oops, I spawned a tree inside of myself. There we go. And, um, so let me just kind of show you again here. Um, let's walk out somewhere here. What I'm going to do is spawn a tree and show you that it does work with the other tutorial I made. Um, because once you spawn one of these, it does become part of the foliage. Now once you exit the game, it will of course disappear. I'll show you by spawning a bunch of trees here. As you can see, I have quite a few. Right? You can see all those. It's very big. And, well, let me spread these out a little bit more. Alright, so, see so I have this big group of trees that I just spawned uh, next to that landscape. The problem is, is that once you stop the game, they are going to disappear simply because it was spawned at runtime. Now, yeah, there are a few ways that you can save it in your editor. Um, uh, what you can basically do is, each time you add an instance, you can... Uh, make a save game, and you can save which component index you added it to, and then just these transform properties, and as well as uh, this item here. And what you can do is when you load up your game again, you can add these instances using these the same data here. Um, but that isn't something I recommend simply because that's not, I don't know, it just isn't something you'll probably want to do. Um, yeah, but uh, I was, was going to show you. So, if you follow my other tutorial where you can, you know, cut down trees, uh, do all that fun stuff, you know, like that, um, you'll notice that the instances that you can spawn in this second tutorial work with that. So, if I spawn a tree, I can still push it down. Because, like I was saying, it does become part of the foliage itself. Right? So that is pretty handy. And since it is part of the foliage itself, it also does have all of the optimizations the foliage has. Right? Um, this is very optimized. Um, you know, placing these in the game is just like, you know, it has the same kind of performance as if you were to place it um, in the editor itself. Now, one thing. Um, I actually didn't look into it, but um, I'm just wondering if you can set the coal distance, set coal distances. Um, yeah, so if you have a coal distance set up, it should work with these instances that we spawn. Uh, to test this, I'm going to go into my tree and set up a coal distance. Let's see here. So that to a max of uh, I'll do a thousand. See how that works out. So let's see if this instance we placed is cold. Yep, so it is cold. So you know, like I was saying, this really does become part of the foliage as uh, you know, all the collision settings and all that great stuff. So, you know, very handy. You know, if you have a game, you want to have the user place some trees, um, you know, then, then that will work out. You know, like I was saying, if you want the, you know, things you place to be persistent throughout different games when you stop and play the game again, all you have to do is, each time you place a mesh, a tree, or whatever, you pretty much want to, um, you want to save all the data that you inputted when you uh, placed it. And right when you start the game, you want to replace everything, if that makes sense. 
Um, but that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, you know, if you did, be sure to like the video. If you want to watch some, well, if you want to be notified of some more videos, be sure to like the video. And, well, subscribe to the video. And, um, be sure to check out my first tutorial if you didn't see it. It'll pretty much let you interact with foliage, uh, kind of like I am right now, right? I'm pushing down that tree, push down all these trees, respawn them. Um, I can harvest wheat. You know, it is pretty cool. Um, but anyways, like I was saying, I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks for watching.